My name is Lucas Spinoza and I'm the owner of the Black Sheep Lounge in Welland, Ontario. So there is a bit of a, a meaning behind the name of the Black Sheep. So in 2013, my dad acquired the building that the Black Sheep's in currently. And uh, I, I had been collecting some artwork from a, a Northern Ontario artist named Angelina Rona. And so she has a piece of a little girl holding a Black Sheep and crying. And I've always really liked that piece because it kind of symbolizes uh, that it's difficult to be an individual and sometimes chasing after something that's unique to you can be, can be trying. So when I was looking for a name, I had this piece hanging in my room and I looked at it and the first name I came up with, with was the, uh, with the Black Sheep Lounge. So the Black Sheep opened in 2015, in August, uh, August 6th, 2015. And the main goal was really to offer a community center for people in Welland because at that time, there weren't too many uh, places that people could congregate, could talk, community group, groups could come fundraisers could happen, live music could happen, and so we just wanted to offer a space that was open and accessible to, to all people of all ages. Black Sheep almost inadvertently in the beginning became a community hub. As I said, we definitely wanted to offer community space, but I didn't expect that to expand past the physical boundaries of the Black Sheep. Uh, but people in the community really started to feel uh, that sense of, of love and that kind of yearning to help in the community. And so we started expanding that to raising money for charities and using the space as uh, kind of a, a meeting place for different not-for-profit groups. Uh, every month we have a different latte that raises money for a different organization. So for instance, we had pink for breast cancer, we had green for hospice Niagara, uh, and we're continuously coming up with different fundraising events, cleanups, um, even food drives and clothing drives and things like that. So the Black Sheep for me has always been, uh, it's a lifestyle. I opened a cafe because I love talking to people and I also obviously love coffee, which really does help. Uh, but really the, the biggest thing is I wanted to be able to wake up every day and enjoy what I do. Uh, and I don't enjoy anything more than, than doing what we're doing right now. It's talking, answering questions, uh, debating with people on issues. and I, that, That's something that, that makes me happy every day. I don't think there's ever been a time that I thought I was going to quit doing this or that it was too difficult to want to move on, but uh, definitely there were some difficult times. Uh, when we first opened, the first couple months, we would literally have three full days go by where not a single person came in other than my family or close friends to just kind of hang out and provide some moral support. Days where we didn't make a single dollar. So those days were definitely difficult, but uh, every year provides a new challenge and a new opportunity. So the beginning, there was a lot of question marks. We didn't know what was ahead of us. We didn't know what to expect. Uh, but now there's new challenges as we grow. We're busier than we've ever been. Lines out the doors on lunch, at lunchtime during the week. Uh, so yes, there's, there's more money coming in, but there's also more money going out. So we have to be more creative on, on how we make, bring money into this place. Um, how we build our team here, getting new staff for the Black Sheep. So uh, I, I, think, I think it can be difficult, but you don't open a small business in a small community if you're not willing to work for it um, or, or that it's something that you, you don't get into it for money. I think you have to do it because you enjoy what you do first and then the money comes after. I think if you had to compare us with a Tim Hortons or a Starbucks, uh, we definitely lean closer to a Starbucks than, than a Tim Hortons because we're definitely not about convenience. Uh, it's not about being the fastest or the cheapest, it's about offering a product that we're happy with, something that we're excited about serving every day. Uh, but where we differ from a Starbucks is the fact that we don't offer every size and every flavor. We're trying to give you what's best of the coffee that we source from all over the world. Uh, but we're definitely not in competition because if we had to compete with a McDonald's or a Starbucks or Tim Hortons, we'd get our asses kicked. So. We get coffee from all over, uh, Zambia, 
We get it from Namibia, we get it from Ethiopia, um, Nicaragua, Honduras, Brazil, Colombia, and most recently from Guatemala, so all over the world. When we come up with a new name for our coffee, usually what we try to do is a little bit of research on the farm, the farmer, uh, the country, uh, and again, for instance, about Guatemalan coffee is the newest that we've brought in. Uh, our roaster, Whalen, was researching uh, things that are unique to Guatemala and their national flower is a white orchid. Uh, so to pay homage to Guatemala, we named the coffee the orchid. Uh, and so uh, a lot of our coffees have a similar theme where we're either kind of playing with the title because a lot of the names of the farms are in Spanish or in Portuguese or in the native language of the country that we, uh, we source our coffee from. So we're always trying to come up with something fun. Uh, magma, for instance, is from a farm called El Volcan, which means the volcano. So what comes out of a volcano, magma, uh, and that's how we got the name there. I am probably the most unorganized person you've ever met, so a daily schedule is is uh, all over the place. As you guys know, even trying to get this to set up, it's, my communication skills are very poor. Uh, but every day, I, I'm pretty consistent. Wake up, eat, shower, work out with my brother three times a week, and then as soon as I get those out of the way, then it becomes seeing what we're doing for the day. So I'll talk with my mom, who's here first thing in the morning, and see what she wants to accomplish by the end of the day for the cafe. Talk to our chef, see what she wants to accomplish for the accomplish from the back of the house uh, and from there uh, then I check my calendar to see what kind of meetings I have if I'm meeting with a constituent for my my council side of my life if I'm recording a podcast for the podcast side of my life um, but I try to keep every day between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. free so that I can be in the cafe and talking with customers uh, and just make sure that I'm present and uh, contributing to, to the cafe. Our staff has changed a lot since day one. When we first opened, it was myself and one, one chef in the kitchen. Uh, now we have seven staff going on eight plus myself. Um, and it's actually become more personalized as the Black Sheep's gotten a little bit older. So now uh, our general manager is my mom, uh, my dad's our baker, uh, my brother's my personal trainer, uh, one of my best friends, Waylon, he's our coffee roaster. My girlfriend comes and helps us when we're, uh, when we're extra busy. Uh, and everyone who comes here becomes family. So it's, uh, it's definitely a very tight-knit staff and community culture. So when I was a little kid, I definitely didn't think I was gonna be owning my own business. If anything, I thought maybe I'd take over my dad's bakery. Uh, but by the time I was 13, I kind of figured out I didn't want to do that. But I always wanted to have a job where I got to wear a suit every day. Uh, and I almost had that opportunity because I, had, uh, I was accepted to McMaster for accounting and decided not to take that and I ended up taking the pre-media studies because that's when I decided I wanted to open a cafe. So I don't think I ever really had a, a clear idea of what I wanted to do. I just knew that um, I, I wanted to work for whatever it was that I was going after. I don't know why, but I think it's something to do with my dad. It's always been working the hard way even when you don't need to. It's been kind of fun. I think I chose the coffee shop because I had to, in a way. Um, I joked about opening a shop with a friend of mine in high school. Um, my last name is Spinoza, his is Garashi, and our plan was to open up a cafe called Spurgashi's, which was a kind of a play on our last names. Uh, but it was a complete, it was a joke. It was just something we were doing for fun, we thought would, would be fun to do. Uh, and when my dad purchased this building, originally it was going to be a salon, like a hair salon. And uh, when that fell through, my dad's like, why don't you open that cafe you were talking about? And I said, sure. And two years later, I had a cafe. So it was uh, kind of a, a strange, strange turn of events. And I think once you have a restaurant, a cafe, a bar, whatever it is that you own, uh, you start to look at the world a little bit differently of food and drinks, uh, as we were talking about prior to this, about when you're in film or in broadcasting, you start to look at movies differently. And the same thing is true uh, of owning a restaurant or a cafe like myself. Uh, when you go to a restaurant, you're kind of looking for something that's outside the box a little bit, uh, because if you can make it yourself, it starts to get kind of crazy to pay 20 bucks for something you could do for two bucks. Uh, that's why with our menu, we try to do something that's different that people wouldn't normally do at home. So it becomes something fun and, and interesting for them. But uh, it definitely gets, gets tricky. I do love uh, Popeye's chicken though. That's, that's my go-to every Sunday. I have uh, five-piece spicy tenders. 